Hello guys and welcome back. Last week we finished off this snow globe and we still have other things that we could have added to it, but we didn't have enough time in the end because Fixmas is over. But have no fear because though these are not working anymore, um, for those of you who don't know, as soon as the 18th passes, all the Fixmas trees shut down until next year. Which of course means that all of the factory shuts down as well. That being said, if you had stockpiled any of those Fixmas gifts, then you could still run your factory. However, that is not important for us because we were sensible enough to get our firework factory up and running in time, ready for us to stockpile some fireworks. And stockpile is exactly what we did. So if we go over to our storage facility, which, okay, I admit doesn't look like much, but we can check it and you'll see that we've got over 14,000 fireworks to play around with over at the next year. And we're actually gonna take a few of these now because I want to do a little opening to this, this video. Now, one thing that I did want to do with this little firework display was make it a display. And so if we grab our fireworks, you'll notice that if we put them down, we can't delay these. So as soon as we fire them, they fire in that order and they're done which doesn't make for a great firework display. So if only we had a way of giving it a little bit of logic, allowing us to maybe create a timer. Well, perhaps we can with Nobelisk. There should be some kind of like slight delay between these ones and those ones. So let's have a look. One, two, three. So it looks like I'm going to be placing down a fair amount of Nobelisk. Let's see what we can come up with to start this Let's Play off. Ah, uh, sunrise. What a lovely time to try out the fireworks. Anyway, let's let's go. Here we go. So we have the first one. Beautiful. Those are still going off. Okay, okay. Well, it could be it could be worse. They're just so big. So big. Hmm. Now I know for a lot of you, this many Nobelisk isn't that much. We could go much further, but bear in mind that you have to place them each individually. And if the game crashes by accident, uh, you have to start all over again because it blows everything up all at once. I thought this was a fair amount. There's about 200 Nobelisk and I'd say a couple hundred fireworks. So we're just gonna hope for the best and go for it. I'm a little bit nervous because we can only do this once. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So let's let's give it a go, shall we? Let's just remove that. Look at that. Beautiful. And the timers are going off. We've got a few more over there doing a nice little spiral thing. Oh, I think it's too many. I, I, I think we've, we've gone a little crazy. Wait, that wasn't supposed to go off. <gasps> Okay, so the timers are going off on those ones. They're all going off in the wrong order, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> wow, okay. And we've got more timers. We've got more going off over there. More coming off of it. I think I should be a firework designer. This isn't bad. I mean, it's a bit bright. Some more. Then we've got these spiraling around. Okay, maybe I overdid that. Maybe I overdid that. <laughs> Although I kind of like it. It's impressive. So, and then, last but not least. Wow. Beautiful. So guys, what did you think of that? Uh, I think that's enough horsing around in all fairness. It's time to get to work because we've got a lot to do today. Finishing off in the last episode, we actually started to work on a pure iron refinery setup, which would then go on to solid steel, uh, which is this lovely little setup here. Now, unfortunately, during the live streams, we lost a lot of frames uh, due to me not realizing the encoder had changed when uh, I'm like, moved to the other PC on OBS. So to avoid that, uh, we ended up moving our whole steel setup over to the Dune Desert. Of course, moving to the Dune Desert does have its issues. Firstly, we need to arrange our transport. Now, I've decided we're actually going to use this line. We're going to run this all the way along um, across here. 
Um, and if we can, we'll also slip a second line along here. So we might need to extend this outwards. And what will happen is this will be the return track so that the train will, will swap. It'll go the opposite way to this way. Uh, so we're going to have to swap this round. Oh, that's a bit of a pain. Uh, but we'll also have a train track heading along along here all the way to the, the main base. And once we get around this side, we'll start doing the train track system that we did earlier, the one that's kind of just two foundations across. And then we'll do the curves rather than using this as it's a little bit more structured and uh, doing this makes it a bit more difficult to, to make those turns clean. So I'd prefer a curvier track. So yeah, we'll just get on to doing this now. After several hours, we actually managed to get this up and running. Now there are no supports on this, but it does run all the way to the opposite end of the dune desert. And where possible, I did try to stick to the terrain. As you can see, we managed to do quite a nice little slope. It, it looks quite bumpy here, um, but it actually works quite well. Once we crossed the lake, we ended up in this section. Obviously, we want to make use of the, well, the pure coal node over there. And there's also a normal one, I believe, next to it. And we're going to Im import all the iron that we need for the steel ingots, which we're going to do underneath there. As you can see, we've done this uh, pretty much the exact same setup as we had over at the main uh, starter factory. Uh, we haven't finished building it yet. We're just going to work on all the logistics sections now, like the conveyors and the power. The max speed of any of these, thankfully, is only going to be 60 items per minute on this side and underneath they'll all run along a main manifold, which means all of this can uh, quite easily be set up. Um, one thing that I should be doing, let's just grab that, is also blocking these sections. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner, like it's intentional that we're replacing this conveyor in front. This particular station is quite an interesting shape. Um, I actually took this from Firefless's uh, stream the other day, where we kind of... Uh, stagger the windows and I think it looks really nice especially nestled in between these uh, little holes. Only thing is I wish we had walls to cover that because it looks a bit odd. The train station and um, steel smeltery has its own quite unique look for, for our build. It's got this kind of bulge at the bottom and then the long line. Um, the bulge obviously is because of the train trying to return along that track, but I actually like the way that it's turned out. It's something different for our builds. And one thing that really stands out to me are these supports, and they took a huge amount of work because it's layers of different items in between. We've got four glass windows on either side, as well as two sets of pillars, um, both the painted ones and then the iron ones, which you can see in front. In fact, we can go a little bit closer. You can see we've got this kind of cross system going. And then inside, we've also got the, the frames and some signs as lighting on the inner pillar. It uh, takes a lot of work, but it really does look nice and really stands out here. And it's something that I'd like to repeat for this heavy modular frame factory as well. Speaking of the heavy modular frame factory, now that we've got the water set up there and we also have the copper, uh, copper, coal over there and also the iron running around here, it is now time for us to get started on the heavy modular frame factory, which is going to be here. So I need to build a, a little bus to take the steel across to this section. And then I think we'll do a little bit of a time lapse. If you've seen the time lapse on Friday, you know what this build is going to be. Um, but I'll give you just a one point of view um, of this. The rest you can see on that video. As you can see, we have now got our steel ingots being moved across this bus, which is quite slim. We've only used a walkway as the, the main support, and then we have these pillars. In fact, we could do with making these pillars smaller, really, um, but I am quite happy with it. Uh, we're going to run the heavy modular frames back across here afterwards, and uh, you may have noticed that there is a power um, joint underneath here, which is running power to 
what is going to be now our heavy modular frame factory. So let's get that time lapse going so you can see what we're going to be doing. For this heavy modular frame build, we are actually using a lot of alternate recipes. I do recommend actually watching the video on the time lapse as we spend a little bit more time on it and it's more just showing you exactly what's going on. But I wanted to add lots of detail to the outside to make it look pretty cool. This only actually produces 10 heavy modular frames per minute, which really isn't a lot, but it does look pretty cool. And I would be lying if I said I didn't like it. There are some elements that I'm not too keen on, certain wall sections, um, such as here. It just feels a little bit messy with all the different um, styles. We've got the, the plain, smaller, thin ones. We've got the larger ones. We've got the diagonal ones. Then we've got the shorter diagonal. It's just a bit of a hodgepodge. Is that even a word? Like, it's just a mess. But the overall... Um, aesthetic that we've got here I do like. We even managed to fit some of those supports on the back side holding this all up and you'll notice that we are clipping the refinery. Now I'm clipping the refinery for an aesthetic look. It's specifically like that. I think maybe we could do with removing the glass to be honest. I think it looks possibly better. Bear in mind this is a moving part without that so we might change that at a later date but it's the inside that really does it for me i love this system that we've got going on here when it comes to the constructors you can see that we've given this kind of border around the outer side of them uh, you'll see it over here as well and i just feel it looks a lot more industrial and i actually want to try and move from one constructor to another using this system. The lines on the inside also look pretty good. We've got all of our um, our logistics done under, which is a little bit of a mess. I mean, seriously, let's not go anywhere with this because there's so much going on. Um, but I mean, it is pretty clean considering it's, oh goodness me, so cramped. Uh, definitely if you're doing underfed, manifolds and logistic lines give yourself two foundations worth of room because this is this, this is so cramped it, it was painful but i have to admit my favorite part by far is not this cool heavy like manifold look or the water coming in above nor for that matter is it this section of all the uh, manufacturers producing those heavy modular frames and running them along the top though that is pretty cool it is this so next to the refineries we have all of the resources going up to the manufacturers and as you can see, it is nicely tucked between behind this half glass wall, which is in front of it. It's something that I really want to add in my builds because it just separates it all. It looks almost like it's a laboratory with all the automated resources behind it or an electronics factory. But I have to admit, this is, this is just the start. Now that I've started playing around with this, I definitely want to add more builds like this. And we will probably do more time lapse um builds for the bigger factories if that's something you do like to see let me know in the comment section below or over on the actual time lapse video because it's something that i'm really interested in doing alongside these for you guys if that's what you want but with us now producing heavy modular frames and being able to send them back to our base, I think the next thing which we'll be doing in the next episode is working on a central storage hub idea where we can bring all the resources, drop them off and then go to all the other factories. That way we can start tearing down and rebuilding the starter factory, which has been a long time coming and in turn get started on a mega factory. So I guess that means that next week we're going to be working on this section, which was the planned central storage. But until then guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, as well as our Lunar Eclipse Patrons, Dixie Chris, Lord of July and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.